In this lesson, we are going to introduce the mixed strategy and the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. Remember from last lesson, we looked at the matching pennies game and we saw that there is no pure strategy Nash equilibrium or said otherwise for any strategy profile, heads, 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 tails, 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 heads, at least one of the players has an incentive to change their action. What we're going to do now is see how we can solve this game using a slightly different solution concept. So before we said players just choose their actions. What the idea of a mixed strategy does is it says players instead of just choosing an action, they place a probability distribution on their actions. So for example, a mixed strategy for player two in this game is the probability that he plays heads and the probability that he plays tails. Now, now that we have this notion established, what types of probabilities could we possibly expect in this game or to fit what we think is something to be reasonable? So let's do an experiment to show that not all probabilities are reasonable. Let's assume that player one was playing heads, his strategy was to play heads with probability 0.95, a very high probability. What would player two do? Well, because player two always wants to match, he gets a payoff when they match heads and match tails, player two would always choose to play heads. Of course, 5% of the time, because player one is only playing heads with probability 0.95, he would not match. But 95% of the time, he would match. So player two would play heads. However, if player one knew that player two was playing heads, he would not play heads with probability 0.95, and in fact he played tails with a very high probability, specifically a probability of one. So we can't expect it that player one would always play heads with probability 0.95, because then player two would always play heads, and player one would then no longer play heads with probability 0.95. So it turns out, this is a mathematical result, and I encourage you to look this up in the references, I'll provide a specific reference. But for a player to be willing to randomize, to play each of its actions with a positive probability, its expected utility from playing each pure strategy must be the same. So let's do this out in some math uh, and we can see what it looks like. However, to do that, we need to introduce a little bit of notation. So let's let P, so let's let P, equal the probability that player one plays heads. What does that mean? That means one minus P, because there's only two actions, is equal to the probability that player one plays tails. So now we want to know what is player two's expected utility or his average utility when player one plays heads with probability p and player two will play heads. Well, if player two plays heads, p percent of the time, player one will also play heads. So player two will get one times p. However, one minus p percent of the time, player two will earn negative one because player one will be playing tails. So times negative one. We can do the same thing to find player two's expected utility when player one randomizes with probability P and player two always plays tails. He plays tails with probability one. Well, one minus P percent of the time, he'll earn one, because what one minus p percent of the time, player one will play tails, and if player two is playing tails, he gets a reward of one. However, p percent of the time, he'll get negative one, because player two will play tails, but player one will play heads with probability p. So what I said earlier is that for player two to be willing to randomize, his expected utility from playing heads and playing tails 
given players one strategy must be the same. So what does this mean? Mathematically, we can derive the condition such that player two would be willing to randomize. All we have to do is to set this equal to this. So what we get is P plus one minus P times negative one equals one minus P plus P times negative one. Okay, this is a very simple equation and we can solve it and we can see that for player two to be indifferent between playing heads and playing tails, P must equal 0.5. Again, we can do an experiment. What if P was greater than 0.5? This means player one would play heads more than half of the time. In that case, if player one is playing heads the majority of the time, player two would always prefer to play heads. Similarly, if P is low, player one would be playing tails most of the time, and therefore player two would always wanna play tails. However, when player one mixes between heads and tails with probability of 0.5, player two doesn't care if he plays heads or tails, okay? We can do the same thing for player two. So we're gonna let Q is equal to the probability that player two plays tails. So for player one to be willing to mix his expected utility from playing heads and playing tails has to be the same in both cases for when he plays heads and when he plays tails given player two mixes with probability Q. So we can do the exact same thing. We could write out the expected utilities. We could set them equal and we can see for player one to be willing to randomize, player two must randomize with probability 0.5. So what we have here is when player one randomizes with probability 0.5 and player two also randomizes with probability 0.5, both players are indifferent between their actions. If they're indifferent between their actions, they're indifferent between randomizing. So in this case, both players randomizing with probability 0.5 is a Nash equilibrium in the sense that no player can do better by changing their action. And in this case, their action is the probability in which they randomize. So in this game, we say P, Q equal, P equals Q equals 0.5 is a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. So to review, a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium is a probability distribution for each player over all of its actions such that it cannot do better by changing that probability. However, we use the result that says that for a player to be willing to randomize, it must be indifferent between all actions that it randomizes among. In the next lesson, we're gonna dig into this a little bit more to see why the mixed strategy is not quite as intuitive uh, as the pure strategy Nash equilibrium. The next lesson is kind of a bonus lesson uh, and we won't really talk too much more about the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium after this, but it's a very important concept to know.